Hey everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to our playthrough of Bravely Default 2. Now, in the first part, I was barely getting my sea legs back, so much so that I felt the need to include a little montage of me quickly grinding out a bunch of mobs after I had already been like, oh, maybe I should stop the video here. And I had to do like a whole separate outro kind of thing because I just started grinding and I was like, this is too long and this is boring. So I'm back. I grinded for a little bit, I took a little bit of a break away, and uh, this is what we have now. All of my party members are level 20, which is the max level for the demo itself. Uh, they're not all at their maxed job levels, but it wasn't really that hard to level the, the job levels at all once I had gotten a rhythm of things. And I got my rhythm pretty much like five minutes after I slept at the end and then started my outro to the, the bunch of mobs that I was just killing. Um, with that, we've landed on a couple of things. For one, our equipment's way better. Staff of Life is an item that was dropping off of the Wasp, so we're going to be dual-wielding those. They have a decent amount of magic attack and restorative power. Um, we've got a Mystic Hood, a Mana Robe, White Cape, and a Pendant. We've got a Mystic Hood and a Mana Robe for her, too. She's going to be using a Rod of Ice, and she's actually going to be sticking with a Mithril Dagger in the second hand. We'll talk about that in a second. Also, with the Silence Immunity and the Poison Immunity, uh, she's going to be using her Fist. It's honestly Monk, and being uh, without a weapon has been probably the strongest thing so far. Um, not sure if there's any drawbacks to it at some point later, other than not having equipment. Uh, actually on, but with the ability to have both hands empty, she's been really, really powerful. Uh, we also found this uh, Calisiris. Uh, I, I think I found this. Did I buy this or did I find this? I think I found this on a, on a rabbit in the dungeon in the last video. Uh, or somewhere I found it. And then he's got a Tomahawk. We found these on one of the snakes. He's got a round shield, plate mail, which we found in a chest as well as the other accessories. Now for jobs, we're actually going to be running double white mage, sub black mage on both Seth and on Gloria. Now realistically, I'd like for him to be uh, a monk because I'd actually like to use Eternal Inferno as he's the only one who can use the special ability. But my reasoning is pretty sound. Um, with Uncanny Economy, which is something I would consider mandatory for running Black Mage in the demo, uh, it lowers MP cost by 20%, which is pretty massive when you're casting magic a lot. But also, because he's sub Black Mage, he has access to all the spells. This is going to be the same for Gloria. On top of that, can cure between battles, but most importantly, making use of the Kinetic Energy specialty, which allows me to do basic attacks in order to restore MP. I have a bunch of ethers, but this should make my MP just easy to manage throughout the dungeon. We did exactly the same for Gloria for all the exact same reasons. She just doesn't have a special attack. For Adele, we are going to be running Monk Sub Vanguard. Uh, no particular reason for Sub Vanguard. Um, provoke, Scale Strip, Spells, uh, sh a Shell Split are all fine, but she won't be able to use Shield Bash, and honestly, it'd probably be better if she was Sub Freelancer here. Lucky Charm uh, would be okay, but Body Slam, not super great. And then Vanguard Sub Freelancer, he has the heaviest armor on, so I might choose to use the Body Slam skill on him, which does more damage. The, the more your weight actually is. I also want one character with examine, just in case. And also, with Vanguard, uh, I just want him to be my tank. And with that, we go into abilities. So, Uncanny Economy reduces the MP cost of, I, of everything by 20%. And Crit Boost, I honestly just didn't really like a lot of the other options that I had. Maybe Grace of Angels if I want to go really out of, uh, out of the way. But we'll talk about Grace of Angels in a second. So, she has Grace of Angels, and honestly, I think I might uh, change that over. I might even give her Divining Rod, just because I'm going through a dungeon. Um, but realistically, I think I'll just swap over to Crit Boost. For Adele, we have Bare Knuckle Brawler, so she can use her Bare Fists. We also have the Crit Boost, and we also have Revenge, which will make it so 25% of the time when she takes damage, she will be getting BP back. Now, the person I probably put the most consideration into is my Vanguard in that of Elvis. So, he, I already mentioned that he has the sub uh, of Freelancer for Body Slam and for Examine, just in case. Um, but there's actually a few things we have here. I want Crit Boost again because I just kind of don't like many of the other options. But one big thing I plan to do on him is Provoke and Default a lot. He's my tank. Grace of Angels makes it so that when my BP is negative, I take 20% reduced damage. So if I provoke enemies on top of having all the most likely to be attacked armor on... 
um, I can just tank a bunch of damage before even getting to the point where I can default an enemy. Now, if I do have the chance to default an enemy, um, I have a 25% chance of earning 1 BP whenever damage is received. That will also play into if I provoke and I go negative in BP. I did consider running BP by default, which makes it so that when I am defaulted, I generate BP every time I'm hit. And as a tank, um, there's a reason why that's under the Vanguard option in the first place. That being said, the cost of two, when I figure I can do a lot more by just going into the negative and running that kind of tank, is probably going to be better in the long run. Um, but either way, that's what I've landed on. That's what we're going to be tackling the dungeon with. And that's what we're going into with Bravely Default 2's demo. I do have some additional comments. I said at the end of the last video, I would provide a little bit more feedback because I was just head over heels, you know, oogling and ogling. So let's provide some real feedback before we go into the dungeon. Um, I don't mind the enemy respawn rates too much, but these wolves you saw in the last video were extra brutal. Um, I wish I could tilt the camera angle down a little bit more so I could get almost a, a parallel look from the ground. This view is fine, but like this range of view doesn't really feel like it's accomplishing very much. So I kind of wish I could do that because especially when you're up against mountains, it can be kind of hard to see around them. It kind of reminds me of Final Fantasy VIII's uh, world map camera control. So that could definitely use a little bit of an improvement. Um, the actual encounters, you know, actually I had a pretty easy time with them once I took another five minutes and broke them down and figured out how much health they had, how much I could zerg them down by fully uh, braving in a fight. And the result ended up being I almost always killed everything before anything got a turn. And that's without even using any special skills or MP. That's straight up with auto attacks. And that was, again, within minutes of me finishing the last video. Only a few encounters actually required strategy once I got my rhythm. And even then, I eventually overpowered them just because I'm level 20 with all these points and all this extra armor and weapons. Uh, now, another thing is that the minimap uh, is either non-existent that, I'm actually okay with that. I still think it could be a little smaller, but this is enormous. Uh, I've played plenty of RPGs that have mini-maps that kind of emulate this size. And it's okay, but I feel like there's a better way of doing this uh, without it blowing up to cover that much of the screen. It's something I would actually probably use fairly often, and I'm glad that it actually adds a bit of transparency to it when it takes up a bit more of the screen. But uh, that's something that I could see, you know, definitely bothering some people. Uh, I didn't have any issues with the movement in the world map or even getting the jump on enemies once I got used to kind of what the range was on the little swipe right here. Uh, again, I think the camera in the over in the uh, overworld is probably the prob the thing I had the most issue with. And it's not even so much an issue, but it could be so much better than it actually is. Um, other than that, I don't really think I had any other feedback to provide. So we're going to save uh, before we go into this dungeon. Mind you that that 2 hours 50, uh, two hours 22, sorry, uh, I did step away from the game for a good like 15 minutes or so. So I'd say I spent another hour grinding approximately before coming to this. But let's see what it actually amounts to. I do also have my battle speed set to 4, so I need to actually adjust that. I like at nighttime also, there's the, uh, the lantern. And I wonder if these... Yeah, so now as a level 20, you can see the enemies actually flee from me, which makes it really easy to get the jump on them, which then, you know, exacerbates a lot of these battles being not a super high difficulty. Oh, I didn't actually get the, the Brave BP. So literally all I was doing while I was grinding out... And this I did this in the original Bravely Default as well, so I'm not all too surprised this was possible. But I literally just did this... With battle speed set to 4. You can see with battle speed set to 1 why that might take a while. But the uh, the power the power increases with these items that I found. You can even just see. Here I left the dagger on so it gives her a little bit of coverage for vulnerability since I knew there were going to be wasps in here. I did a lot of learning in between the parts. I think we'll set the battle speed to 2. Um, let's actually explore around here. So I mentioned in the last video that I kind of wish, I, again, that I could adjust my view here in the uh, in the dungeon itself. I, I understand why I can't, but it feels like I maybe should be able to. <laughs> we also stocked up on a bunch of items before we came as well. I got a lot done in an hour. A lot more than I normally do. You want to something really weird? These longer loading screens were not happening until I started pressing record. 
Now I have had, I've had the game on for a little bit. Um, now let's see actually how much some of this stuff does damage-wise, because I'm still rather uneducated about the rat bits. So let's just throw a, a Fyra out, just a single Fyra, and see how much it does with some of my stat increases. Okay, so that's that's a reasonable amount. But I guess this actually is an interesting thing to bring up. So my Switch has been on for about, you know, the 2 hours and 22 minutes in total. And uh, we're seeing a, a few slight performance issues. And it's hard to tell if that's a direct relation to my, my Switch in particular. Or if that has something to do with the game and how it actually handles the Switch after uh, being on for too long. So, I'm glad that we're capturing this, because, uh, again, I was told that there's a feedback section at the very end. And so, uh, seeing these kind of things, I feel like is valuable for things that I could include at the end for feedback. Because I don't know where all of a sudden these long loading screens and kind of like popping textures are coming in. Uh, hopefully, that's something that can be rounded out in the future, though. Because uh, I, you know, I don't want it to be a problem. But you can see, even with these snakes, like, just finding a few items around. Even my healers. See, this is why I went White Mage. Because see how every time he beats them senseless, he's just, uh, just getting all his MP back. And this is without Adele even getting a turn. When Adele goes, oh boy. Yeah, she does a lot. And honestly, I should probably invigorate as her first move, but it cost MP, so I decided not to. So, uh, another thing, I'm kind of impartial to this blur. I actually like when blur options are available to be turned off. And, uh, it, you know what? At, in, during the daytime, it was fine. During the nighttime, I find it a little bit more noticeable. Um, I've had games where blurs like this can actually really kill the experience for me. And uh, it doesn't kill it here, but I certainly would take the option to turn off motion blur if I was, if I was given it. So let's uh, let's chalk that up. I really want to make sure that even though I was I was having a blast in the first part, I had a blast in the hour that I spent farming. I mean, it reminded me about how much, as much as I was not like a uh, head over heels for the uh, story in Bravely Default One, how it really resonated with me from an RPG design standpoint. Uh, but I want to make sure I have ooh a new mag a new uh, weapon, a new magic knife. I wonder if I give that to you. It has magic attack plus 10 on it. So yeah, that's going to you. Magic knife, always a good item to pick up. Um, you know, I, I just wanted to make sure that there was some good, there was some reasonable feedback and it wasn't all fanboying. Because I was, I, someone who's not a fanboy of Bravely Default, it was weird to me practically to be that head over heels about the demo the first time I played it. So I really wanted to stop taking a few things that could be improved because we don't just want the game to be delivered as is we want them to improve upon it if they uh if they take our feedback properly so i uh, i'm glad that i was able to do that also i noticed this uh fog of war i actually find the mini map being this size especially better inside of something like a dungeon uh I, at least i can make more use of it uh, i didn't even notice that there was i guess uh, dark areas that were not being uncovered I'm also trying to do some of the fights. I want to see what the, the rabbits actually drop. Well, that's not going to help me get that information. <laughs> I can hear my cat meowing outside, too. Don't mind me if we just go into four times. You know, I wonder if maybe some of those issues had to do with the four times speed and going back down to a one or a two times speed. Maybe they were just issues I didn't notice because I was playing at four times speed for an hour. But they might have been issues that were there the entire time. There we go. You can see just how strong my characters have gotten in just the short time that I was not playing. Uh, so the, the difficulty is really going to be all left to the boss at this point. This thing still have a lot of health, but as soon as Adele gets a turn, everything's dead. Oh my goodness. I didn't even sell stuff. Like, I have a bunch of, like, snake venom and stuff. I didn't even check to see if that's all stuff that can be sold. Uh, it looks like it. Yeah, items that can be sold in shops and cures target from sleeping. Okay, just wanted to check real quick. Fortunately, with the divining the divining rod option... Ooh, a tactician's hat. Let's see what that does. I have a feeling I know who's going to use that. 
Uh, magic. Actually, it's a uh, mostly magic attack. It doesn't really help with physical attack at all. It does have a lower chance of being attacked, and it is overall more stats. But that might actually be better on someone like this. It lowers my max MP, which isn't that much of a problem. It lowers my restorative power. I think I am gonna give it to her. It just it's overall increases lower chance of being targeted. I think that's that's okay. Uh, we're gonna look around for some more loot real quick. Nothing down here? Just a dead end? I feel bamboozled. It would probably help. <laughs> See, getting used to the range on that was a little weird. It's mostly because of the exact camera angle. I, I'm, I'm a lot better at it in the overworld than I am here. Alright, these things do not stand a chance. I always love beating the enemies with double stabs. Or a staff and a, and a dagger. Especially when you... Oh, dude, you gotta get the 16 hit. Uh, could I have gone through in here? I like the snakes. They're like, nope, nope, nope. Everything, <laughs> everything's just like, nope, nope, not having it. Ooh, a Valkyrie shield. I didn't even get the hit. I heard, I heard it swing, but oh no, I did get it. I just didn't get. Uh, no, I didn't get the swing for the bonus PP. Again, remember, as soon as Adele gets a turn. Everything's pretty much dead. Yep. <laughs> She's so strong. Oh, these things drop antidotes, too. I didn't even notice that. Uh, there's also a treasure chest on the other side. Uh, you're the only one using a shield, so I assume that this would be a pretty unanimous... Oh, it makes him a lot slower. Makes him even more likely to be attacked, though. I'm willing to take the speed and evasion hit, because the more if on the boss, I want him to be targeted. I'm going to be provoking... But I want him to be targeted as much... I didn't even see it there because it was behind the mini-map. <laughs> I should have seen it. It was totally visible. Ooh, alright, alright. Hold on. Well, you're gonna just do that. That's not changing. <laughs> Way too strong to allow that. And then we'll do that. Effective. Oh, Kalar yeah, I think it might have dropped off the rabbits, the Calarasis or whatever it's called. But see, now I just burned all that MP, but it's not even really that much of a concern because I'm I'm White Mage. So I just kinetic energy it all back. So I guess you could see how much Gloria is probably going to get back right here. Assuming Gloria gets a turn. If she gets a turn, we'll uh, we'll definitely get a better look at it. Yep, there she goes. All right, well we're going to we got to change her action to this. Yeah, look at that. Just way all the way back. All the way back to full MP. And her magic power is still, like, really, really effective again, so... Probably go around here. That's a save point. We'll go around. Anything in here? I've been able to go in these, like, in-between areas, but there's nothing in here. It's kind of weird. But, like, then I'm, like, locked from, like, going over this small gap right here, which would have skipped the whole dungeon. It's weird they allow me to go to some of those places, but not to others. I wouldn't mind an extra, like, Ilmer, too. Dude, my cat is scratching at my door because he wants... He wants my love. He does this all the time. Uh... Yeah, you know what? Let's let's do the same thing that we did with her. And we're just gonna use these. There we go. I'm gonna go let my cat in. We might have a, a meowing cat for the rest of this, but he's just clawing at that door. Oh, another tomahawk. Oh, hello. We may have a meowing cat for the rest of the video. Because I don't think he understands that his food was outside the door, so he didn't come in here. Uh, okay, so we just got another weapon, the Earthbreaker. So this is better for his overall weight, which we don't actually want. Lowers his MP and increases his physical attack. It again lowers his speed and also lowers his aim a little bit. But again, increases his chance of being attacked. So this is the kind of thing where I'd actually really like an extra slot. 
so I could have a counterattack or something. Uh, the revenge is as good as we're going to get, but uh, that's not really what I was referring to. Uh, okay, so that's going to fully restore everything. Let's do one more save. I almost just want to include this at the end of the first video. I might not even split videos, to be honest. Uh-oh. It looks like someone got here before us. Well, anybody who's come all this way won't be here for fun. Whoever that is must be here looking for the same thing as us. It's interesting seeing them do the dialogue just in the world and not, like, with the backdrop like they normally do. It's, like, it's really jarring to me, but I like it. <laughs> Mine at last. Just look at you. You exquisite little creature. And not only are you beautiful, you're going to make me rich beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt your little loving pal. Did you have a moment for a wee chat? Hmm? Who are you? Don't mind us. You don't look much like fellow treasure enthusiasts. Are you lost? Hey, the thing you're carrying, is that? The water crystal. Oh, a connoisseur, I see. Yes, my young friend, it is indeed. What's that? An asterisk. Oh, it's an asterisk. Dude, it's seeing them, the seeing physical ones is weird. see your way to letting us have it, could you? Uh, something tells me he's not just going to hand it over, Adele. Indeed not. Perhaps if you were to offer me an utterly obscene amount of money, I'll fail in that. You'll just have to try and take it from me by force. Although, I'd recommend against it. Bernard's the name! Dreaded master thief and all round criminal genius. And this asterisk is mine. <laughs> Need persuading of that. Oh, thank goodness. Well. Dude, if this was bravely default, that cu that cutscene would have taken like eight minutes longer. Oh, I've already got so much more faith. Oh, yeah, the boss arena. Oh, that looks great. All right, we don't really know much about this guy, if, if he's going to have any ads, what he's weak against, so we got to take a couple turns. We're going to go into the negative on Elvis here. We're also going to just throw a few basic things at him to see if they work. He can be poisoned. Okay. Um, we are also going to go into the negative, I think, on her, just to reduce both of his defenses. There. And then on him, we're just going to throw an element out to see if he's weak against anything, because we still haven't gotten to our... Uh, actually, you know what? I don't know if he has any AoE attacks, but I kind of want to, yeah, do that. And then we're going to use two turns on him. We're going to use one to examine. So we're going to go into the negative, which is fine, because we, we purposely prepared for that. We're going to provoke him. So he is weak to lightning and daggers. He's got about 20,000 health. Oh, wow. He didn't do anything. He took 500 damage from the poison. Alright, well then here's what we're actually going to do. <laughs> Oh yeah, we're going to go way into the negative on this. I am okay with that. Alright, that's about one-fifth of his health. We're going to do the same with Seth. Ooh, his magic attack's not as high as hers, so it's not gonna it's not going to shred about a fifth of his health. So everyone's in the negative right now. Our two casters and our healers are the two big ones that are in the negative. So he's going to default, which is still going to lose him 500 health. He should get another turn. Okay, Elvis is no longer in the negative. Ooh, he's default. Okay, so he's... Alright, that's fine. 
I think he just took both of his turns. So we're going to keep the same debuffs going. And I think we're going to do... Provoke again, just to make sure, because I don't, I, I'm not 100% sure if it's worn off. He's also going to lose protect. We're going to see how much body slam does. No <laughs> Nothing. Okay. The plan there didn't really work, but he's just killing himself with his defaults. Ooh, he's going to super attack. Ooh, he's not even going after. There we go. Yeah, he doesn't take any damage when he's in the negative. Ooh, that did a lot. And he can also steal health. Uh, we should be okay. Should have maybe kept one of my casters not uh, BP negative, but he's defaulting anyway. And he uh, took two turns that time. That's fine. Again, we want to keep him in the negative, but I guess we'll just attack him like normal. Yeah, that works. Uh, you know what I'm going to do? We're going to go nuts with her, but we're going to have her restore some H, some of her own HP. And then we're going to go nuts. Uh, we could do this. No, I, in case she gets attacked again, I kind of don't want to. Rendered vulnerable to fire. 0. 0.6 damage eight times is pretty interesting. I wonder if that's worth... I think I need to default for a turn in order to do that. Because I think with two turns, I'm going to burn through too much. So let's, uh, let's see that. Well, nah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're going to default. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. Hold on. Let's, let's see. I, I was losing track of what I had already said I was going to do. So it's just that. Okay, no, but she does need to default. Okay, so we're going to default. And hope that that defense increase is enough to keep her alive in the case that she actually gets hit. Okay, he used Steel Breath already, so she should be fine. I wonder if he can be blinded. Yes, he can. Uh, he can't be blind. Oh, no, he can't be blinded in poison. It just kind of goes in and out. All right, let's see how this does. Oh, that's pretty good. I still think it might have been better for me to just do four attacks instead. Ooh, he missed. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to Cura on her, and then we're going to go ham again. And we're going to save turns on Seth. That way she's safe, because she has a lot of health, and Elvis takes very little damage. Unfortunately, because of what I just did, Adele isn't going to... Actually, I wonder if just four Thundars will be enough, because it's only going to do barely enough. How much health? Oh, you know what? I think I can just do this, to be honest, and just finish him with Seth. Yep, that'll be enough to finish him with Seth. There you go. Yeah, he was susceptible to all sorts of status effects. The poison came in real handy. There he goes. That's a lot of job points and money. And one ether. I mean, we get an asterisk, too, but I'm assuming it won't bother showing us the whole obtaining of the asterisk. Oh, actually, it might. So, asterisks are new jobs, mind you. Yep, the thief. Thieves are nimble, fleet-footed, and attack the enemies with a flurry of rapid blow. Steel breath, we saw. Killer cure. Yeah, so, I mean, that's that's very, very bravely to fall. Oh, man. Dude, one of my biggest uh, grading points was the writing for the job quest in the original Bravely Default. And that was so much more tolerable of an asterisk boss than any of the previous ones. Deal quadruple damage when the target is suffering from a status ailment. I really like that. Woohoo! We got another asterisk! Hey! <laughs> no birdie! Now we'll finally be able to understand what this blasted book is saying. Or maybe not. Ugh. 
I still can't make head nor tail of most of it. But I thought the asterisks were supposed to help us crack the code. Ugh, when are we going to be able to work out what it says? No need to panic, lassie. Slow and steady wins the race. If we just keep doing what we've been doing, the mysteries of the universe will reveal themselves soon enough. I suppose you're right. And besides, another asterisk is nothing to be sniffed at. I must confess to feeling rather disappointed. I had thought that we might have found the crystal. No need to get down about it, Gloria. It's like Adele says. An asterisk isn't a bad reward for a day's work. I suppose not. But our quest for the crystals must continue. Fire, water, wind, and earth. All must be restored to their rightful place if our world is to be saved. And time is fast running out. There we go. Thanks for playing Bravely Default 2. The story ends here, but there might still be a few things left to discover. Why not keep playing and see? Interesting. I wonder what that means. Well, I mean, we got to go back in and find out, it right? It's time to choose. Accept your fate and await oblivion. Or make a stand and fight for survival. Step into the light. I can't skip this. Hero. Be brave. Oh, it's it's because of the it's the credits of the demo. I was like, wait, what? I thought it was like playing the end again. Or like it was playing like the intro scene again. Oh, that looks dope. We'll save the world, Gloria, I promise. Woohoo! Well, we need to see what... Maybe there's some more se What other secrets? Yeah, it's gonna be later this year. Yo, it doesn't have an exact day, though. We still got time. <laughs> we still got time. Okay, let's see what happens here. Saving. I was told... Where's the... Where's the... I was told there's a feedback section. Maybe it's on the title screen. Let's save and go back to... So wait. First, what does it mean by there might be more secrets? Like, what? <laughs> like, what, what, what secrets? Something in there? Was that open last time? I don't remember. Hey everyone, just another closure to this video. Uh, this is actually gonna need to be three videos because I didn't find the extra secrets when I was actually going through part two and people had to tell me about it on stream the next day. So there are actually two super bosses for me to fight in this demo, which is great, but they're going to be a different video altogether because both the fights took me a little bit of time. So be, uh, stay tuned for part three. It'll be a Bravely Default weekend, it seems. So thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you in part three for the two super bosses in the demo. Until then, take care.